Hello everyone, once again welcome to Circuit Globe. I am Roshni and in this session we will be going to discuss what are semiconductors. So friends, let's get started. So friends, basically semiconductors are those materials whose ability to conduct lies between conductors and insulator. We are already aware of the fact that conductors are basically those materials which possess good electrical conductivity as against insulators are those materials whose electrical conductivity is poor. So semiconductors are basically those materials whose conductivity is somewhat less than conductors but it is very much higher than an insulator. So semiconductors are majorly classified into two categories. First one is intrinsic and the second one is extrinsic. Further, this extrinsic semiconductor is classified into N-type and P-type. And we will discuss these two types in detail later. Okay? Let's first understand what are intrinsic semiconductors. Intrinsic semiconductors are pure form of semiconductor materials and these are formed by tetravalent atoms. And we know tetravalent atoms or group 4 elements contains 4 electron in its valence shell. Okay? The examples are silicon and germanium. Here the figure clearly shows the crystal lattice structure of silicon. Here each silicon atom form covalent bonds with the other silicon atom present in its neighboring area. And it do so by making use of electrons present in valence shell. These electrons in the valence shell of silicon atom forms covalent bond with its neighboring silicon atom. And at room temperature, these electrons are bounded closely with each other. But once some external heat is provided, these electrons gain sufficient energy and leaves its position. And at that particular point of time, a vacancy of electron is created which is termed as hole. However, this movement of electron generates conduction through semiconductors. Let's now have a look at the energy band diagram of intrinsic semiconductor. As we have recently discussed that with increase in temperature, electron leaves its position vacant and gets free. Here also we will discuss the same criteria with the help of energy level diagram. So basically the electrons are present in valence band. But once some external heat is provided, so with the increase in temperature, these electrons get free and moves to conduction band, thereby causing conductivity to increase and resultantly this causes resistance of semiconductor to decrease. Basically, this band gap is nothing but that particular energy which is required to get the electron free. With further increase in temperature, more electron from valence band moves to conduction band thereby increasing the conduction of the device. Now friends, after having idea about how intrinsic semiconductor conducts, let's move further to understand the same for extrinsic semiconductors. Extrinsic semiconductors are basically impure form of semiconductor materials and these are formed when we add either pentavalent or trivalent impurity to a semiconductor material which is in pure form or we can say a tetravalent silicon or germanium atom. Now just have a look what are the types of extrinsic semiconductors. So extrinsic semiconductors are basically of two type. The first one is N type and the second one is P type. N type extrinsic semiconductors are formed when pentavalent impurity or group 5 elements are doped to a pure semiconductor atom and P-type semiconductors are formed when trivalent impurity or group 3 elements are added to a pure semiconductor atom. So let's first discuss what is N-type extrinsic semiconductor in detail. As we have recently discussed that N-type extrinsic semiconductors are formed when pentavalent impurity or group 5 elements are doped into a pure semiconductor material. For example, antimony, bismuth or phosphorus and here we have used phosphorus atom to be added into a pure silicon structure. We know that group 5 elements contain 
five electrons in its valence shell. So the four electrons of phosphorus form four covalent bonds with its neighboring silicon atom. But still, a free electron is left, which is unbounded and is responsible for conduction. Further, when some external heat is provided, like in case of intrinsic semiconductor, electron breaks the covalent bond and leaves its position vacant, thereby creating a hole over there. This somewhat increases the conducting level of semiconductor more in case of extrinsic semiconductor than in intrinsic semiconductor. These are also known as donor impurity due to the presence of extra electron. Let's now have a look at the energy band diagram of n-type extrinsic semiconductors. Here, the donor energy level in the energy level diagram shows the energy level of free electron present in the crystal. These electrons have sufficient energy even at room temperature in order to reach the conduction band and thereby decreasing the resistance and increasing the conductivity. Okay, now the question arises why n-type extrinsic semiconductors are called so? The reason behind this is that n-type semiconductor contains extra negatively charged particle. This is the reason why electrons act as majority charge carriers in n-type semiconductors and holes serves as minority carriers. Let's now have a look how p-type extrinsic semiconductors are formed and how they conduct. We have already discussed that p-type extrinsic semiconductors are formed when trivalent impurity atom like aluminium, indium, gallium or boron is added to a pure silicon crystal. Here we have added boron. As we know that group 3 elements have 3 electrons in its valence shell. So the 3 electron present in the valence shell of boron forms covalent bond with 3 silicon atoms. But still a vacancy of hole is created over here due to the absence of 4th valence electron in the valence shell of boron atom. Fine. So when some external heat is provided then the bounded electron gains sufficient energy and tries to fill the vacant position. In this way the movement of electron generates conduction. You will get a better idea about the same process by having a look at the energy level diagram of p-type extrinsic semiconductors. Here, the acceptor energy level shows the presence of extra hole in the structure. Okay, so when external heat is provided, then the electrons present in the valence band moves to the acceptor energy level, thereby decreasing the resistance and increasing the conductivity of the material. These are also known as acceptor impurity as it consists of extra hole in its structure. This is the reason why in p-type semiconductors, Holes act as majority charge carriers and electrons as minority charge carriers. This is all about semiconductors and its types. Well friends, this brings me to the end of this lesson. I hope you find this lesson very useful. So guys, please like and share this video and put in your comments below. And do subscribe our channel for more updates. I will be back with a new lesson. Till then, take care. Bye bye.